Hi everyone, it's Dot, and I got a lot of stuff right in front of me right now this morning. That's because I'm making an orange cranberry granola bar. Yes, you can have granola bars on a low carb diet, and I'm gonna show you how. All right, what goes into my granola bars? Easy, first the nuts. I have walnuts, pecans, slivered almonds, and coconut. Now, I'm not sure if coconut is really a true nut, but hey, let's go with it. Then I have my seeds, golden flax seed meal, sunflower seeds, sesame seeds. For my flavors, I'm using dried cranberries, and I'll have the link to the recipe below on how to make them, and orange, which we're gonna use just the zest. I also have sea salt, for a little savoriness, cinnamon, and vanilla extract. For my fats, I'm using butter and unsweetened peanut butter. Then I'm gonna use eggs to help bind the granola bars together. And finally, I'm using this delicious dark chocolate at the very end, and it will make the bars soar. First thing I wanna do is get my orange zest off a large orange, and you just do a little zesting plane and then just take it off. And what you wanna make sure of is you don't want any of the white pith from the orange. That makes it taste bitter. You just want that orange flavor. A large orange should give you about a tablespoon of zest. So I'm gonna put that aside. The next up is gonna be my cranberries. Pretty much I did half cranberries and I'm gonna chop them up a little bit. And the primary reason for that is granola bars when you're low carb can be extremely crumbly and the larger the cranberries I find when I make them is they tend to enhance the crumbling process so to speak. So this way I'm hoping by making them smaller that should make the bar a little more steady when I actually cut up the block. All right what I'm going to do next is process my nuts just a little bit. You can certainly chop them by hand Chopping it by hand gives you a little bit more control as far as how big you want the pieces. Here I have walnut halves, and I'll give you an idea. I'm gonna use my food, food processor for these. And I, I'm using a, my mini food processor. I don't wanna put all of my nuts and seeds in here, and the reason why is I wanna control the size, and what I find is the ones at the bottom get chopped up the most, and I don't wanna create a paste, you know, or basically a nut butter, if you will. So anyway, I have my um, walnuts in here. I'm gonna add in with them the coconut, too, because um, I'm using coconut flakes, which is which I prefer to the shredded ones. I just feel I can work better with them. And, but they're still pretty good sized flakes, so I wanna chop them down a little bit. I'm doing that with the walnut. So I'm just gonna pulse this as I go, and, I'm, and this one has two settings. You can either grind or chop, and I'm just gonna chop. That's that, and so if you look at it, I have some varying sizes, but most of them are little small little pieces. I can still see the walnut. So that sort of is what I'm going for. I'm gonna go ahead and do the pecans, but I'm lightly gonna do the almonds because the almonds, if you look, are already slivered. I just want them broken up ever so slightly. So let me go ahead and start working on the rest of the nuts. All right, the sunflower seeds, I'm not really chopping. If I was, I would just go ahead and put them in with the larger nuts to chop them down. Didn't bother with it, I don't mind, they're small enough. I'm just going ahead and adding the seeds pretty much intact and of course the meal is going in there with it. Now I'm gonna get ready to mix everything, but what I went ahead and did, and I, I already have my butter on the stove, I'm melting it, so I don't wanna brown the butter, I just want it melted, and that's gonna be going in with this in just a moment. But first, let's go ahead and start adding in all my other ingredients. So I'm gonna add in my cinnamon, sea salt. Gotta have my cranberries all up in there, and last but not least, the peanut butter. Keep in mind, you'll get a little bit of a workout as you're mixing everything because you want that peanut butter to be spread across everything. It's also gonna be one of the ingredients that helps bind everything together. So you really wanna make sure that peanut butter spreads. All right, this smells amazing. That peanut butter is just driving me bonkers right now. Get that back in there. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and add my eggs uh, because this, along with the peanut butter, is again my binding agent. So I'm just gonna go ahead and mix the eggs all through here. Okay, I kept my butter over a low heat. It's all melted. I'm gonna go ahead now. I took it off the burner. I'm gonna add in my vanilla extract. And this is where I'm gonna add in my zest. And the reason why I'm adding it to the butter instead of just into the nuts straight is that zest 
basically likes to cling. And what I find is when I mix it in with the butter, with the melted butter, it spreads apart a lot more. And so this makes sure that the entire dish will get a lot of even, it'll be flavored evenly as opposed to pockets getting this huge burst of orange and other bars, not so much. All right. I have my butter. It's cooled down enough, but it still is liquid that I can add it in. You don't want it cooking your eggs. That's really important. So I'm just going to go ahead and add it all in. And now we're going to mix everything in. The butter is also going to serve to help hold things together once this all cools. Okay, my butter is all mixed in. So is the orange zest. It smells wonderful. I've already gone ahead and lined. Basically, I'm using a brownie baking pan and I've already lined it with parchment paper. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and just put my granola or my mixture, the cake basically in here. You should be able to fill up the entire pan. This is about a seven by 12 roughly pan. Everything is packed in here the way it should. I'm going to go ahead and put it in the oven. My oven is heated up to 300 degrees. It's going to go in for about 20, 25 minutes. What I want to see if it starts getting browned around the edges, then that's when it's all set and ready to go. All right. It's been in for about 23 minutes, but it's already started to smell really good. I'm going to go ahead and take it out. Now it looks liquid on top and that it, and it is, and it's just some of the fat coming up, but don't worry about it. It's bubbling, so it's way too hot for any type of chocolate to go on top of it right now. You want to let this cool for at least 20 to 30 minutes. So I'm going to let this cool. The fat's going to get reabsorbed. If there's anything glistening on top at that point, I might take a paper towel and just slightly dab it. But 99.9% .9 of the fat's going to get reabsorbed into the granola. All right, I have my double broiler. I have it over a, um, some heated water and all I'm doing is I'm melting my chocolate. I broke it apart into small pieces. Once this is all melted, we'll go ahead and start putting this on top of the granola bars. All right, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take the granola out of the baking dish and all I'm going to do, which is when you have your parchment paper, you want it hanging over the side so you can lift up. There we go. Granola bars usually are long and I'm not going to do that because what I find is when they're long, they're not that stable and you're guaranteed to have a lot of crumble. So I'm going to just cut these up into squares, but pretty much you should get about 20, 24 pieces out of this. All right. My chocolate is all melted. My pieces are cut and I'm just going to take a spoon. And I'm just going to start drizzling it on here. You can go whatever pattern or direction you would like. It's up to you. Okay. All right, enough time has passed. The chocolate has solidified on top of the pieces. I'm going to go ahead and give one a try. If you take a look at them now, normally I would grab from the corner, something like this. However, my cameraman has told me because of the sheer amount of chocolate on there, he feels it's his duty to test that first. So <laughs> I'm leaving that for him. I'm going to go ahead. I'm just going to take one from right here and to give you an idea. So oh, a little piece came off from another one, but that's all right. You can see a little bit of the cranberry in there. See the chocolate started penetrating below, which is just fine. But you can see the layer of nuts in there. So I'm going to go ahead and give this a little taste. Okay, this is really nice. A very obviously nutty taste to it. As good as this is, there's one little thing I can do that might make it taste even a little better. Ta-da! Uh, this is the peanut butter that I'm using, which is no sugar, no salt. It is straightforward peanut butter. There is some uh, palm oil in it, which is healthy for you. It's a nice saturated fat. I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit, not a whole lot, just a tad. It's not even a teaspoon of it. And I'm going to take it and smear it on top. So. Here we go. Bon appetit. This is awesome. <laughs> you don't have to add peanut butter to it. I just decided just to add a little touch, less than a teaspoon. It's probably less than a half a teaspoon. This just for me, I just want a little bit more peanut butter because I'm being a little greedy. Uh, the chocolate is an overpowering. It has a nice little, uh, a subtle dark chocolate flavor to it. It's just, it just tastes really nice. 
and then you have these bursts of orange and cranberry to it. Easy to make, it's a lot of ingredients, but you can really simplify the ingredients too if you want it to by, I use three different types of nuts. You can just, instead of doing, I did two ounces per type of nut, you can do three ounces and only use two types of nuts. So you can, you can really play with the recipe. Don't feel that you're sort of hemmed in with it. I hope you enjoy the video. I hope you try making this on your own. It really does taste great. Like, subscribe, share with your friends, and until next time, I'll see ya.